Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today and I'm looking around at some comments and messages and trying to think of what to do my next video on. But there has been three or four messages or comments I've looked at today that mention LiDAR. So I thought I would do a story on LiDAR today. And those of you who have followed my channel know, as well as the Egyptian pyramids, I've tried to document as many Mayan sites as possible. Some of these are very well known, such as Tikal and Palenque and others, but some are relatively unknown. It's really blown me away just how many Mayan pyramid sites there actually are. And I will try to leave some links below, but I have documented many dozens. But we're going to go down to one today, and this is called El Sibal. And this is one that maybe I have seen mentioned on a list. But here are the ruins of El Sabal. But here is the location, and here are the ruins of El Sabal. In fact, you cannot see any ruins, and th what you are looking at right there is a reconstructed temple, and we'll look at that in just a second. The University of Arizona did some recent work here with drones and LIDAR. So let's just take a look at what they found here. And here is that concentrated area around the reconstructed temple. But here is what the LiDAR revealed, lots of platforms and pyramid structures and what they theorize were residential buildings in the bottom of the picture. Just doing a quick Google search, all you will see pretty much is that one reconstructed small temple here and all the pics. And I'm not sure when exactly this was reconstructed, but even TripAdvisor says <laughs> not worth the effort to get here. But let me show you what's actually here. Here is a model that they did of what they think this whole place looks like and only just a little reconstructed temple visible today. I did happen to find one website that talks about a brutal voyage to this place and how hard it is to get here. The nearest town that you have to get to is called Sayakche, I believe that is the name of it, and that is described as an inhospitable town. So the town you have to go through to get here is described literally as an inhospitable town. But here is one pic I found of the ruins in the jungle, a lost city in Guatemala today. Now here is another pic I found, and I'm not sure if this is reconstructed, but a three circular ringed platform here with stairways. This is Yich Ak Balam, a ruler here approximately 750 A.D. Now here is what they call Stella number 11. Let me just blow this up, but here, a ruler. And does this appear a little more Olmec than Mayan? Really, when the Olmecs ended and the Mayans started, that's just a murky, hazy mystery. But here you see some glyphs up here at the top, and I've kind of looked into Mayan glyphs, especially the ones that are related to the counts, the different longer counts. What's the oldest date that I can find referred to? Uh, about a uh, little over 10,000 years ago. And I'm working on a video. Be patient. And I'm talking about a date when this may have all started. Here you see this ruler and this crown here. And that appears to be maybe a serpent. And that almost looks like a bird's beak coming off of here. Maybe a serpent. The imagery on here is pretty cool. There's a lot of things here. A lot of glyphs. He has this image on his chest here. Is that a sun god? Leave your comments if you have any ideas there. I've got a few in my mind, but this video isn't going to be very long. Here you see he stands on something and there are arms down here. And, but here you get a good look at the imagery on the Stella. And a lot of the glyphs are lost, so I'm not sure what this all says. And your thoughts, I find this interesting. This is a part of the world, Guatemala, that seem the Mayans seem to spring out of. But when looking around for other YouTube videos in the site, there was only, I think, three or four that I found. But here was one from the Peabody Museum, and I found this to be very interesting. They did some excavation work here, and they went down about eight meters and finally hit bedrock and they thought they were going to find most of their stuff around the surface but this really surprised them and the further down they got the older the history here went back 
So the farther down they dug, they got back to a dating level that went down to at least 1000 BC. So that is certainly an Olmec period. When did the Olmecs end and the Mayans start? Well, this seems to be a site where further research may, may lead to answers in that department. But something I talked about in a video not too long ago, the four cardinal points and the pyramid and the cross and alignments, this all is gone over in this video. I thought it was very good. But just going back to the original story, this is from Tucson.com, and it comes from about a year and a half ago. This story kind of slipped my attention here. Here's the LIDAR work. But it says most of the ancient Maya archaeological site of El Cibal in north central Guatemala is buried in dense jungle. Eroded stone ruins create vague mounds and outlines on the crowded jungle floor. Harvard archaeologists excavated a map in detail of almost two square kilometers, about 500 acres in size, of the site and surveyed another six square kilometers, about 1,500 acres in the 1960s. For decades following, the site was left alone. Forty years is a long enough time that you get new questions and new ideas, said Takeshi Inimoto of the University of Arizona. Armed with new cultural interpretations, Inimoto and his international team of archaeologists from the United States, Guatemala, and Japan ret returned to the site in the early 2000s and then continued work here for about 15 years. So they commissioned the use of high-tech tools such as LIDAR, and they mapped an unprecedented 470 square kilometer area in Guatemala here, roughly the size of the city of Scottsdale. By that time, LIDAR was a pretty well proven research method. It helped us look at a wide area that was basically unthinkable before. And that's the key to new research, where you have so many things at our fingertips that are giving us access to information we never would have had before. As we don't have standing buildings, Inamoda said, but with the remains of collapsed or partially eroded buildings, so that's what you can see on the LIDAR. In different periods, you see different kinds of structure, and tracing how those structures spread and evolved over the time gives insight to the dynamic history of the Mayans. And that's what we are all trying to figure out today, the chronology of some of these civilizations from the past. They also found that the maps that Harvard made were incredibly accurate considering they were all ground survey, so the LIDAR kind of confirmed what was found here a long time ago in the 1960s. As my video on El Sabal on Google Earth here, really nothing can be seen except that little reconstructed temple. There's only a couple videos on YouTube, though this is a pretty big Mayan city that was flourishing. The history goes back at least a couple thousand years before that. When did the Olmecs end and the Mayans start? Well, but here seems to be a place where we have a transition period. This goes back 3,000 years at least. Lost history, perfect for my channel. Hope you thought that was cool and you all have a very nice day.